So uh, first of all, like the problem that we were, I mean, we actually solved is the computational like, intensity needed for SLAM or simultaneous localization and mapping, which is actually the technology that is used in self-driving cars. If you look at one self-driving car, this is what you see in the trunk. This is all the computer, co basically uh, devices that you would need to uh, do the calculations and, and run the algorithms. Um, similarly, for a home robot or a smaller robot, you could see that the ones that are just random uh, cost about $280, and the ones that are, uh, you know, they, they're self-aware and they know where they're going, they're about like $1,000 or $750. That means there is basically a laptop inside them. But computational intensity should not be that hard. Uh, what we did, we actually optimized uh, the software um, 16 times in terms of um, uh, the, 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 the computational needs, like the amount of RAM we use is like eight megabytes, whereas like our competitors use 62, sorry, uh, four gigab gigabits. And then the same thing is the, uh, the, the operating system uh, size. As you can see, like we've um, uh, revolutionized, you know, the, the, the technology in that sense. <clears throat> now, why does that matter? Um, there's a lot of applications that can be used for robotics, um, but why wouldn't it happen? And, and the reason is that the idea of a thousand dollars trash can is just not feasible. And what we've done is like our, our QSLAM runs in a board that costs less than ten dollars. And that's how um, we actually, uh, because we actually looked at the problem in a different way, and we uh, solve the computational intensity. <clears throat> now, if you look at uh, for home robots, like which are, which we actually the, the, did the comparisons, our agility is much uh, better than competitors. So we actually boot up in two seconds. We start work in three seconds. The best competitor it takes takes them seven point seven seconds just to boot up, and then another uh, seven eight minute seconds to start working. That means uh, you know, to get the peripherals up and running. And the worst one's about like 30 seconds. Um, there are two applications basically for a robot. Like again, like we focused on the internal, uh, sort of indoor devices. And uh, although SLAM technologies and the concepts that we developed can be used for outdoors as well. However, based on our budget, we focus on indoors. Now, the first application is going from point A to point B. And for that, you need to actually discover the entire map. So basically, we beat every competitor with taking only 12%, we're covering 12% of a very complex area, as you can see, uh, just to discover all corners and areas of the map. And for a coverage application, we actually use the commercial robots to, to show that coverage, which is like another application for path planning. So basically for path planning, you have three. It's coverage, it's uh, uh, point, point to point, and then it's like patrolling, going to every room or every environment and then scanning and seeing if there is a device there or not or for security reasons. So for coverage, we also beat every uh, commercial robot that is out there. And again, this is our layout. And what that means is that why is that important? Because we believe that QSLAM will do to robotics what MP3 did to digital music. It's basically SLAM technology and navigational technology that can co correlate and collaborate with other devices. And that means like, because if the, if, if the amount of information that you're transferring is so small, many devices can take part in that and exchange their maps and what they see and what they observe. And therefore you will have very advanced devices. We've actually run simulations. Uh, really? Yeah, and, your time is up. So okay. please just finish up, finish here. That's all, quickly. okay, I'm good. So any questions? Uh, listen, you, you didn't give us most of the story. Give us the key things. What's your traction? What's your exit? Just hit two or three key things real quick, please. Uh, sure. Basically, um, uh, we have licensed our technology in December 2019. We sold 23,000 licenses. Uh, we have our contract is basically 100,000 per year. We are talking to our second customer right now and uh, 
uh, we are actually in, in, in discussion with them. Uh, again, we expect 100,000 licenses to them as well. We were founded in 2016, um, and uh, we developed the technology over about four years. All right, thank you very much. Hi, Ali, can you speak to the competitive landscape at all with regards to other companies that are doing similar things? I know like Quantergy, for example, has LiDAR applications, uh, and then obviously there's the big ones like Tesla. Yes, absolutely. So basically, uh, we focus mostly in indoors applications so far, although our algorithms are applicable because the amount of computational intensity that we save that relates to the algorithms. Uh, there are companies that have the technology for themselves, like, for example, iRobot and, and Neato and, and the ones that I've shown. Uh, but there are companies that actually also, uh, you know, it, it, it all is the same technology, whereas like the application is different. The ones that actually license their technology to others, there are about like four or five of them. And in terms of uh, computational intensity, whether they're big like iRobot or they're small, like our size or like this license like to smaller companies like us, they all use gigahertz processors. And that means that the cost of the board and the solution is by multiple times larger than ours. So basically we beat them in price and also in efficiency and what we call computational agility means that a lot of videos that you see in robots like i was looking at the robots that goes into walmart and scans the shelves but once you go in front of it it will you know take some time for it to recalculate its path and then when the person moves it still doesn't know the person moved and still it will go the same path that it calculated and by the time that it goes gets there and then the person has moved to another location this is like not agile and that's exactly the problem that robots are not doing what they're supposed to do and they're not in our lives today what we solve means that the more you know the more uh uh processing power you throw at it like depending on the application it will use all of that it can use all of that but it doesn't need that that means uh you could either save cost or it can be like extremely agile thank you thank so, you Lee. your time oh, is up and get, yeah if oh. you if you have any questions you can discuss it in the chat yeah